This video is sponsored by Surfshark. This is hands down the best motif right here next to Ezio's family to have ever come from an AC game. It is so pretty and the way Jesper and Lauren use it as a light motif throughout the game will not go unnoticed. The Animus will do its part and Desmond will do the rest. We get a small through line of Will never believing in Desmond, but here he's got some faith in him. So faith. The most glaring change from the previous games is how drenched this game is with darkness. Ezio's robes, the Animus HUD, even Desmond's make-believe attire has changed to black, representing, of course, the Animus going into safe mode, and more importantly, how dire the stakes have become for Desmond and how he's handling killing Lucy. This darkness can also be associated with Ezio becoming older and fits in the theme way better of working in the dark. Just walk right past me. 16? Yo, bringing 16 no, to the game really makes it feel name. like it's the end of the line. There has been so much mystique built up about him throughout the first three, and now we finally get to meet the man. And if you don't want random people checking up on your technology like 16, then Surfshark has got you covered. Surfshark is a virtual private network that keeps your information secure when browsing online, whether at home or, more importantly, when on public Wi-Fi such as coffee shops and airports. Surfshark encrypts your data, protecting it from any prying eyes. This security also helps send and receive files safely or even accessing your bank information. Surfshark isn't all business, though. They allow you to change your virtual location, which grants you the opportunity to access shopping deals, shows, and websites that are region-exclusive. And if you have any questions or issues, Surfshark has top-of-the-line 24-7 support to put any of your worries to rest. So make sure you use my links below using code GAMINGWINS to get 83% off and three months free and start virtually traveling the world safely today. Thank God they finally just have us follow along automatically when talking. This might be the biggest upgrade Revelations made. The Animus can separate Desmond from Ezio and Altair and send you home. This is what the bleeding effect has all been building up to, finally reaching a breaking point when touching the apple. I will continue to sing the praises of the modern day story because Yubi went through great lengths to create this super interesting lore surrounding the Animus and how it affects people. And Desmond's mind shattering under what is it basically trying to decode two consciousnesses at the same time makes total sense. I mean... Hell, sometimes our brains get overwhelmed just trying to order a coffee at Starbucks, let alone processing everything Ezio has gone through as if it's yourself. So why is 16 in Rebecca's animus? The core Lucy stole was the same one that he hacked at Abstergo with the hopes of warning and helping his successor, aka Desmond. Something I've yet to mention in all my AC videos is that Abstergo is a Latin verb for I cleanse. Pretty on the nose with that one, Henry Ford. What, you didn't know that he apparently is the one that founded Abstergo and is a Templar? So this is the same sequence used for the trailers way back in the day. Freaking great use of resources, I'd say. The men and women who have fed and sheltered me here. That's about the best reason we get for his new robes. But like, he's been traveling for months and some bright white robes aren't gonna cut it. Ooh, what a shot having the Templar step all over what was at the time like Assassin Holy Land. I know CGR trailers are like impossible to have run in an engine for gameplay, but like, is that what the future generations will have in store for us? I'd tear my ass out and eat it if a game looked like this trailer one day. Oh yes, sir. So how can Ezio see Altair here? One reason is that Desmond being Ezio sees Altair as his memories are all jumbled. The more fun answer is the memory seal from the library is connecting with Ezio because of his DNA and it's actually him way back in the 16th century seeing Altair. And like, just how cool is it for everything we know as Assassin's Creed to all converge in one game? I'm not gonna lie, I've never played AC1 and part of me never wants to. I know the story and what happens, but since I've never been him, I share the same mystique everyone else holds for Altair. And I don't want to lose that because of some dated gameplay. Man, we just can't start one of these older games with two hidden blades, can we? In universe reason, though. Do not seek retribution or revenge in my memory, but fight to continue the search for truth. I think I've said this in every Ezio video, but how can you not love him? This is probably my favorite performance from Roger Craig Smith, and time to see Ezio. Finally wise enough to see past his vengeance goggles. And he sees Altair from the first game, and notice that cape-clad bald guy is like, what the f*** are you looking at? My story is one of many thousands, and the world will not suffer if it ends too soon. Yes and no. If you're curious what I mean by that, check out the end of my conclusion of the AC4 video. Still a great line though. Hey! Don't touch the hood. Anyone remember being a kid gaining a new personality after playing these games and desperately trying to look this cool in a hood? Ezio's new threads. Fitting for the old timer, but got some really neat details. The fur on the shoulder is confirmed to be Mongolian, which is the army that attacked Masia for the final time. The white inlay pattern is of Ottoman design, and Ezio's finally leveled up his assassin brain and unlocked a full-on Altair sash. His outfit is a convergence of his travels for truth and newfound wisdom, playing into the themes this game has of it, Desmond's brain, Altair, and Ezio. I mean, hell, Istanbul is called the crossroads of the world. Is this the dumbest thing I've ever seen? 
Absolutely. How do you know about the water? Does it take away from how cool it is? Not one bit. This door is guarding objects more valuable than all the gold in the world. Oh, do you mean gemstones? I'm so amazed Ezio was able to not roll his eyes into the back of his head. That's why he's the mentor, not me. I hope you enjoy seeing this man's face everywhere, because if I'm to take things literally, which I always do, he's been a busy man with the ladies, if you feel me. The assassin must not get his hands on that book! Yo, Ezio, sounds like dropping Cesare off the walls didn't do the trick. So the parachute wasn't invented until 1783, but it was conceived of by Leonardo da Vinci, and the pyramid shape isn't just Ubisoft trying to save on geometry memory, but was an actual sketches from Leo's Codex Atlanticus. Gosh darn, their retool of this game's theme is so hype. We get a nice tilted camera for Ezio's wounded state. Could it be that you are every bit as deadly as the legends say? Or am I in charge of an army of drunk swinging sticks? Yes, and also, yes. I don't think I have the right genes to properly wield it. That's why we can't plug Will into the Animus. I keep the Animus distracted as best I can. For you. Even when he's not a real person, he's still an assassin at heart. Which is so cool, because he made that choice on his own. No one recruited him. It wasn't a part of his heritage. He saw what the Templars were doing, and though his mind couldn't handle reality anymore, did and is doing everything he can to not have Desmond end up like him and let Abstergo win. My guardian angel. There's no such thing. Yeah, I... Thanks. Funny, because it was his glyphs that he left behind that showed us the Adam and Eve cutscene in AC2. That cutscene recontextualizes the story of Adam and Eve with an omniscient god to the Aesir. Hence, in this world, them knowing that story, as we know it today, is just all hooey. All that to say, no angels. Which throws us down the entire rabbit hole of Cain and Abel and how Cain killed Abel to get his apple of Eden in this world and subsequently created the Templars, and that it's really interesting stuff about how UB has retooled the Bible in their lore. Well, to be precise, that is Europa. That is Asia. How cool that the first line out of Suleiman is correcting Ezio, the man we expect to have all the answers, which speaks to how influential and magnificent he is slash was. Suleiman in history is remembered as one of the greatest rulers of his time, and he ushered in the golden age of Constantinople. When I was a child, my father told me stories about the fall of Constantinople. You must mean the conquest of Constantinople. And once again, this will be an enduring quality throughout for Suleiman, and I really enjoyed all his interactions with Ezio as he doesn't fall on the Assassin or Templar side, and threads his beliefs between them, which is probably the best way to end their feud, if I'm being honest. Students like me, or uh, travelers such as yourself. That little pause tells me that Suleiman recognizes Ezio as not being 100% forthright, but knows there's no need to pressure the issue. Work. When I was your age, my interests were... were mainly... Salve. Some things never change. So the Turkish spoken in this game isn't Ottoman Turkish like was spoken at the time, and this was a choice from you being hopes to introduce people to the language as we speak it today. It's your auditory, the la la la. Yusuf was the greatest underutilized new character in Revelations. He was so much fun and would have loved to see him more. Da Firenze. They just had to put in that hand gesture, didn't they? These men are remnants of a line loyal to the cause of the last emperor. Constantine 11. Revelations, I feel, leans much more heavily on the history of the city more than any games previous. Using all these names and figures from history that directly influences the story. With all the different names, dates, and different empires rolling around on their spoke, it got me really interested in learning more about what happened around this period, which is, of course, a huge point these older games wish to do, spark our interest in history. Shahane! Now we can finally get those awful checkpoints guards set up when we're being chased. The standard Ottoman hook plate has two parts, you see. Oh really? I'm really interested to hear exactly what those two parts could be. My mind is scrambling in wonder. The hook and the blade. Oh, thank God for that explanation. Would have never guessed, Yusuf. The hook blade really does make a monumental difference in climbing that, after Revelations, I don't really want to go back without it. When Yusuf mentions it being an extension of your arm, Yubi really achieves that feeling. Yubi is also on record using this as their excuse as to why Ezio at the ripe age of 50 can still climb around with the best of them. Chavo Puri again! Huh? <laughs> How is your appetite for sword play? I do what I must. Lines like these is why old man Ezio is my favorite. Zip lines were something that Yubi had been wanting to do for a while, and the seven hills the city was built on was the perfect excuse to add them in naturally. So, the tower defense. You either love it or you hate it. I love tower defense games, so this was a treat, and you're never forced into them other than this one time. It feels great as a part of Ezio's arc of mentor, commanding all these assassins and working together. Anytime we're shown his age, I'm happy because it doesn't happen often. Eagle vision has been vastly improved, finally feeling like the detective vision from Arkham we've always wanted it to be. The perfect in-universe reason for this would be Ezio finally perfecting his ability through his many years of training. What if I went with you? With me? That's 
that's not going to happen. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> Huh. I guess I had my chance. <laughs> so I believe he's talking about taking over Desmond's body before he had regained some kind of foothold in the Animus. Good guy Clay for asking for consent. I just find this whole situation quite sad. Sad? Are you finally getting soft on us, Bill? Hearing the way Will is throughout the game and getting more into him in 3, Desmond's lack of ambition and settling at a bar seems to make sense. Yeah. Will seemed to be really cold to Desmond, possibly falling into assassin dogma in not the best way pushing Desmond away in the process. Ah, 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 don't touch that. One wrong move and bang, the building comes down. Are you serious? <laughs> Look on your face. Does seeing this make you sad knowing his fate? Makes me sad. Imagine Uncle Yusuf coming to see Flavia. The Secret Crusade by Niccolo Polo. This is actually an AC novel that you can purchase and read. You must be that Florence that he's been yammering on about. Uh, Lothario? Lothario, from what I could find, is a term given to a man who behaves selfishly and irresponsibly in his sexual relations with women. It's a bit of a stretch, but this could be some subtle foreshadowing to putting Sophia in harm's way later in the game, especially considering this man pointed Ezio in her direction. Finally, Ezio wears his hood down much more, and it's cute that it's only when he's with Sophia. Hmm, you're beginning to interest me, vaguely. <laughs> Flirting and playing hard to get. Are you hurt? Why does Altair suddenly have an accent? Uh, Animus Tech sucked at Abstergo, and this is an actual recording from Altair that we are living through Ezio as Desmond. Don't get confused. Some real Inception stuff like here. And I actually prefer it. Same voice actor, but way more fitting than his voice in AZ1. And Al Mualim. So this is just my conjecture through my research. Altair and Malim's names seem to be directly derived from the founders of Assassins in the 11th century. Allah ibn Alathir and Adam Malik Yuavani. Their names and time periods are so close, it can't be a coincidence. Gotta say, his updated robes are looking spicy in this game. You offered him a chance to salvage his dignity. Why? No man should pass from this world without knowing some kindness. So it was Altair that started the trend for the assassins, and that's... That's freaking awesome. Revelations for me did a lot of legwork to really make me like this man. Peace be with you. And everyone said, and with your spirit. Minstrels from Italia. I am going to enjoy this. <laughs> Finally some payback for all those hours of them rushing us down to the streets. While traveling through for Lee, I took her at her leisure. She said it's strictly business. Such business was my pleasure. Every single song is so funny, and there are so many. There's one talking about dropping Cesare off the wall and Vieri being a bitch. Who knew Roger Craig Smith could sing so well as Ezio? Suleiman, the Sultan's grandson and governor of Kefe. And he's only 17. The same age Ezio was when he started being an assassin. Is this man bothering you, Sophia? Excuse me, mister, but the lady and I are- Ah, oh, Duccio. Still hasn't changed. His attitude? Or his clothes. I like that they forced their platforming levels into the main game, instead of being optional for the super cool badass armor of the game. And Yubi didn't keep the same foiler for the Ishika Pasha armor. Instead, we've got to collect these memoir pages, which is a nice change of pace. How cool that we get to pick up years later, just moments after the first game ended. Walk with me, Abbas, and I will explain. Abbas sounds awfully a lot like Abyss. Abbas led the creed into an abyss, no? You bend the rules to suit your whims. This is a theme we see play out among Altair and Ezio in Revelations. There's never really any conclusion to it other than graying up the Assassin's Creed, such as when Ezio bombs the hidden city and uses the protesters to get inside the arsenal. Both things any true assassin would not do. Oh, that look. Boy's excited to show her his new book. It is a good likeness, don't you think? I prefer the original. Smooth as ever. And this painting is actually real. It's Venetian Woman by Albrecht Durr. Yubi saw this and was inspired to base Sophia's likeness off her. Is this just a hold forward and win set piece? Yes. Is it fun as hell? Yes. Altair! No! Man, that is a terrible way for your woman to die. Technically, it's her fault, but of course he's gonna blame himself. He can control that man, but once Maria stopped him, he lowered his control over the man, and he stabbed her. So why the heck does Doreen look like 16? I looked everywhere, and there's no good reason, because 16 is not related to Altair in any way that I could find, which is why they needed Desmond. But I'm happy to head canon that in some way these two men share a family tree, which is why 16 was so entwined with Desmond in this game. Destroy them if you can. You have done well, Tarek. Forgive me. I love that through all his wisdom and experience, even Ezio still fails here and there. See, it is a subtle way to seek revenge. Talking about the writings, Ezio's probably like, damn, I could have just done this instead of jumping through hoops to kill someone for mine? It is a five or six day ride from here, and I will need an escort. Prego. Oh, I'm sorry, you are a busy man. 
I love their theme. It's so cute and light, and I caught myself humming it while working on this video. And again, that's you know, so smooth, knowing exactly what she's implying, but playing it cool. This is the cutest thing I've ever seen. She knows he's busy and snaked her way into getting a picnic with him, even making him get her flowers, whether he knew it or not. Any luck with the final code? Ah, the code, see. I solved it many hours ago. You will get it soon enough. <laughs> what a way to steal some extra time from your man. Do you remember Tarek, the Janissary? The man you quarreled with? Ah, playing coy did not arouse suspicion. What a G. Just walking up to Masyaf, not worried about a single soldier killing him, and having so much pull to get his brothers and sisters back on his side. Two decades have passed since we last saw you within these walls. We could use your wisdom. Now more than ever. Neat. Having the Animus regard this man as an enemy just until we're in striking range, and then he says it's this. That is true, Abbas. I learned many things from the Apple. Of life and death. Of the past and the future. Let me show you. Big dick energy. Just some attention to detail having him roll down the stairs even when they're not present. The assassins were his life. From beginning to end. He had no other. Watching Altair's life and relationship with the assassins morph and change and meeting Sophia were the two big turning points for Ezio deciding to lay down his part in the creed. Anyone else remember losing their marbles at this set piece when it was shown before Revelations came out? Yours is not a subtle approach. Uh, see. Sorry for the delay. Always cool as a cucumber. See. Sorry for the delay. Doesn't those horns sound like the beginning of the Transformers film theme? I'm only bringing this up because the score in that trilogy had no reason to pop off the way it did. AC reminded me of that. What's it like spending your whole life avoiding hard decisions? Foreshadowing his choice in AC3. Yubi always said that they knew where the story was going to end, but they never wanted to lay out the path sure. to get there, as having the ended psych keep them focused but not restrict their creativity. After the death of Christina, something withered in me. It was the death of Christina that made Ezio keep Sophia at arm's length. I mean, for good reason. And for those that didn't do the Christina missions to Brotherhood, I bet this came as a shock. This score goes so hard. Ezio's cloak is a disguise, but it makes him look one step closer, more like Altair. All right, this is about to be a deep cut. Does Cappadocia remind anyone of Drimsma from Infinity Blade? I loved those games and novels, and it was a marvel to have the game look so good on mobile. Are you a capable fighter? I like to think so. Humility. <laughs> Double checking to make sure he's actually dead this time. Most of them don't actually work. Tarek had a really good freaking plan. These people would drown without a fell hand to lift them up and keep them in line. There he is. The monster I came to kill. I am here for the Masyaf keys. Keys? Are there more than this one? So I have heard. Taking the page of the Sulman's book. So what holds me back? Why do I not take the keys to Masyaf myself and be done with these fools? I love the use of the word fools. It flows perfectly after hearing Altair saying, I was foolish enough to believe that our creed would bring an end to all these conflicts. Both men slowly recognizing that this war they rage is fruitless and won't end just because of them, and that the message from the Isu is paramount, and also that they must find time to live for themselves, something Altair learned too late. I'm so sad. Man died protecting his mentor's girl. Get you a friend like Yusuf. Brothers. Sisters. The whole city rises against us, while Yusuf's murderer waits and watches from the arsenal, laughing. Fight with me, and show him what it means to cross the assassins. You can't tell me this did not give you goosebumps. <laughs> just like Altair, Ezio has galvanized the Creed to just walk straight through his opposition. And let me tell you, after the anger I felt with Ezio about Yusuf, did it feel good just to run right in. Showing them what it really means. People desire the truth, yes. But even when they have it, they refuse to look. Well, yeah, nothing's more true than that, but it's their right to be a dumbass, so. The world is a tapestry of many colors and patterns. A just leader would celebrate this, not seek to unravel it. Were it so easy. That is why we make laws to live by. A kanun that applies to all in equal measure. Which is why they call Suleiman the lawgiver. Man, sometimes a villain just gotta be a funny bad guy, right? I can't believe that's the invented parasail. Para driving, para riding? Bookends. We start with a carriage chase and end with one. These men land in the graveyard, symbolic of a Met's, well, soon to come death, and also the death of Ezio's assassin life. So. It will never not amaze me how much music can elevate a scene. Throw in some generic strings or no music, and this scene feels like I kinda been there, done that. But when paired with this motif, oh, it's so cathartic. 
I forgot that Suleiman asked for his father's death and was confused why Ezio tried. Keeping a promise. Sophia stopping Ezio parallels Maria stopping Altair. I'm saving you, idiot! Self-sacrifice. And the mandate for menacing hoods? Was that his idea as well? Sophia asking the real questions. Nothing is true. Everything is permitted. That is rather cynical. It would be if it were doctrine. But it is merely an observation of the nature of reality. To say that nothing is true is to realize that the foundations of society are fragile and that we must be the shepherds of our own civilization. To say that everything is permitted is to understand that we are the architects of our actions and that we must live with their consequences, whether glorious or tragic. It's so cool to hear Ezio's interpretation of the line. And you be to finally give some light on what exactly they mean by it? Ugh. And hearing it laid out like this is just beautiful and made more interesting by hearing characters in later games ponder the same question, such as Edward stating, sounds like the beginning of wisdom, but it's not its final form. And it perfectly flies in the face of may the father of understanding guide us, putting one man on a pedestal to show us the way forward. I do not regret those years, but it is time to live for myself. That's so cathartic to hear, especially him having no regrets. Everything we do in our lives shapes who we are and to look back spitefully and wish to change things is the one-way ticket to unhappiness. This is why when people ask me if I could go back in time and give my younger self advice or change anything, I always say, no, I wouldn't. It's much easier for me to say that now as I'm relatively happy and safe and if I was in a dark place, I might change my answer. But reminding myself that we are the architects of our actions and we must live with the consequences makes me much more aware of my everyday decisions to continue to lead a life worth living. Society as the way we've all shepherded it to be can make us feel trapped and helpless, but there are ways out, ways to cope with deal. And a big way to do so is with other people. Ezio found a way to cope by joining the assassins to avenge his family and found his way out with Sophia. Sophia, you should know by now that I am not a lesser man. Damn, you have to be able to do a lot in your life to be able to say that and not sound arrogant. And I'd say Ezio's earned this. You had better come out of there alive. I plan to. See, Hollywood? You don't have to have your characters kiss or honeymoon or all that weird stuff they do to make us believe a relationship. What a sight, truly. Altair, sitting alone in his assassin robes, hidden blades still attached. Alone. What a full circle bookend moment for the series. Everything coming together. Ezio, Altair, Desmond, Masia. The story honestly could have ended here, and I wouldn't be too upset. This is still, for me, the highest point of Assassin's Creed storytelling. Of their rise and their fall. You might recognize this music from the AC2 Assassin's Tombs, and look where we are. Another tomb. Or an assassin. But what happens to us, Altair? To our family? What does the apple say? Who were the ones who came before? What brought them here? Maria is all wrapped up with the future, but Altair is more curious about the past. What the apple is, and who were those that came before? Knowing the future for me would only bring heartache and despair, and something makes me feel like Altair feels the same way. What a transition. I heard your name once before, Desmond. A long time ago. And now it lingers in my mind like an image from an old dream. God, even a decade later, Ezio talking to Desmond still gives me goosebumps. And here at last, I discover a strange truth. But I am only a conduit for a message that eludes my understanding. It's hard to have something to say about that other than... God damn, that's so good. Lesser men, I'd say, would be upset that the meaning of their life boiled down to being a glorified messenger, but Ezio greets it with open arms. Who are we who have been so blessed to share our stories like this, to speak across centuries? This feels like a meta line about the blessing and curse we all share as humans, to have consciousness and ponder our meaning, because we don't need an apple to speak across centuries. Everything we create is us sharing our stories with each other. Books, poems, movies, even this video. And that question will forever remain. Who are we to be so blessed? We will never know, but as has been a common theme among these games, is continuing the fight for truth. And we could stop that fight wherever we want and be content like SEO is here. He discovered his strange truth and is okay with the answer and is ready to settle. Now, listen. Desmond was the modern day story, and it's just not the same without him. But like, Ezio meets Desmond, that's a freaking win. Time to lose our minds. But finally Ubisoft gives us some answers. A strange place, this nexus of time. Very strange. Four vastly different time periods all colliding in this one moment to be like, hey, Earth's gonna melt, please save. Like any good short, we need to have someone to follow. And to really feel the emotional boss behind this event, we follow a freaking mother and child. 
just to make it all more sad. This entire cutscene and the ending never fails to give me chills. Less than 10,000 of your kind still lived, and far fewer of ours. Stanith Baratheon would be proud. I know what we need to do. Ubisoft knew how to leave us on a cliffhanger that would have us begging for more. Three games in a row, they had us on the hook like no other. And just like Ubisoft, I'm going to keep you on the hook for a third time about completely talking about Ezio's arc throughout these games, because Assassin's Creed Emperors exists. That video is coming and may already be out by the time you watch this. There, I'm going to talk about his story from start to finish. But let's talk about Revelations, a metaphorical and literal black sheep of the Ezio trilogy. Some were tired of the samey gameplay and not much happening in the modern day as previous titles, but that wasn't the point of this game. This entire game was to finally wrap up Ezio and Altair's story so we can move on with Desmond's, and they did such a good job with it. It's a hard thing to create a trilogy of anything, and with Ezio, they did it, with something as complicated and difficult as a game at that. Revelations was exactly as the title said. Constant reveals and understanding, made better that Ezio is in the twilight of his life and is only now about to reflect and seek truth, and not be driven by revenge or contorted by the circumstance he finds himself. It's comforting to know that even at the age of 50, Ezio still doesn't have it all figured out, and he's content with that. Growing up nowadays is the worst, because before we were even 20, we were lied to constantly about everyone knowing what's going on, and that we've got to have a plan to set up our futures, and there's so much pressure, and, and it's, just, it's just too much. And that's just not how life works. It only takes one moment for everything to change, and for Ezio, that was when his family was murdered. But that one moment could be as simple and small as a career change, a broken limb, a change in perspective. I'm not exactly sure what point I'm trying to make here, but these are more just my musings on what this game made me feel and ponder after finishing it. And maybe I feel a bit lost, because Ezio and Ember speaks on the point I can find myself drifting towards, and that being love. When nothing makes sense, the world is burning, and everything feels like it's falling apart, that has been the only thing I've personally always been able to grab onto. I imagine Desmond would grow to love Lucy if he didn't already, and when being forced to kill her is what threw him into the abyss. His mind scrambled. And who was there when he came out? His father. Though they were never perfect with each other, these two men still loved one another, and I want to say hearing his dad's voice helped them come to in the Animus. This isn't your traditional analysis or breakdown of games, themes, and narratives I know, and for those expecting or desiring that, I am sorry. Games, movies, stories always feel like a springboard for discussion on who we are, what we want to be, and how we might want to share our experience with others. And one way or another, video games let me hear. Sharing my experiences and thoughts about a game with complete strangers who also have this feeling in them about this medium of storytelling. Talk to me down below. I'd love to hear anything you guys would have to say. And hey, you guys remember what to do.